and I think we're good ones to talk about this, even though we may Some not be. Some people might disagree. <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. And today's loaded topic video, Josh Duggar, and with that, the Duggar family. Are there, I guess, extreme fundy beliefs? And I'm using the word fundy because it's just a word that a lot of people like to use, especially <laughs> in the secular world, coming against the more intense Christians. And we're, we're gonna, we got a lot to unpack. And to be honest, I don't know if Morgan and I are gonna totally see things on the same page, but we're definitely gonna flush this topic out. We got a lot to talk about. Are the Duggars too extreme in their beliefs and that's causing problems in their kids and in their reputation and their legacy? Are these problems warranted? We're going there. Let's go. Let's go before we go there. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on notification bells. There's just one bell. Just hit that bell. We make videos on culture and social issues from a Christian perspective to help you have hope. And be free. As you all are probably aware, Morgan and I get a pretty good amount of opposition to our content, both on <laughs> YouTube and elsewhere. If you just type in Paul and Morgan on YouTube, you will see a plethora of videos in opposition. <laughs> Um, it's great. It's a good time. I don't want to go too much into that other than to say that has limited the brand deals and sponsorships and any type of work that we could get where we can get paid. <laughs> right. And so um, that is to say you all supporting us on Patreon like really is huge. It's a way that we're able to continue to do what we're doing. Even this video like I can already kind of I'm kind of expecting that <laughs> it's going to get hated on. So if you like what we're doing, if you believe in it and you want to see more of it, please jump on Patreon, become a $5 patron, $10 patron. Go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan show. We'll link it below. Thanks guys. And thank you to our patrons that have been with us for a long time. We love you guys and appreciate you greatly. All right. First, we want to make it very clear. We are not the Duggar family experts. The past several hours, we've done a lot of video watching. Personally, years ago, I watched the show just out of like total like shock and amazement of like this lady has put out 19 children. I stayed up to date for a little bit or anytime I would hear their name in the news, like I was a little bit intrigued because I wanted to see what was going on. When you used to watch the show and I, I never did and that was I think one of the reasons we were just hesitant to make a video on Josh Duggar. I knew nothing about him, but like Morgan said earlier today, I spent a while just researching the family, Josh Duggar, all of that. She spent some more time catching up. When you watched it back in the day, what were your overall thoughts? It was so just intriguing because one, to just see a family like that on like a national television channel. Yeah. Like very conservative. Yeah. Very Christian. That was interesting. But just the way that they lived their life. They lived in this ginormous house because they had 19 children, like, obviously. And just to watch, like, how she homeschooled them and how the older kids helped with the younger kids and just all these different rules that they had. It was just like, this is super interesting. And I think that's one of the reasons we're making this video is we're seeing this conversation. Here's what such an extreme religious Christian kind of Bible thumper this is what that gets you. That gets you this right. man like Josh who is a creep. Yeah, he's it's, a creep. It's, he's a it's creep. dark. Um, so I'm hearing that, and I'm, I think there's a lot of that type of thinking because there's plenty of videos made about the Duggars on YouTube just going after them, saying, here's what the hyper-religious gets you. This is what happens. And my kind of first thought is, okay, so we have Josh. We have 18 other kids are the majority of their kids off the rails? Or is their family actually, did they produce a pretty solid Christian family? I'm just trying to get a, a solid perspective on this without just buying into either side, so to speak. Right, if you know, 10 of their 19 kids are off the rails, yeah. wackos, doing disgusting, dark, sinful things, that's incredibly questionable. So as far as I know, Josh is really the main one, the only one who has really been caught up in really disgusting, awful things. And I'm guessing you guys have probably seen it by now without going too deep into it. It came out a while ago that he had touched his sisters. That was a big ordeal. 
that got a lot of exposure. And then just quite a few years later, got married, had kids, and then it came out that he had gotten on this website and had an affair. Then he came out apologizing, saying he had an addiction to pornography. And then more recently, with the latest drop and what a lot of people you hear talking about, it's just very disturbing, it has to do with child, mm. P-O-R-N. It's, it's really just grotesque stuff, beyond grotesque. There's no excuse for it. <laughs> That's a big topic within itself. Taking the Josh Duggar kind of aside for a moment, let's just talk about, and, and real quick guys, as Morgan kind of said, we, we did some research. Morgan's watched some of the show, but you know, there are, I'm sure, things that we are not aware of. Today, we're just speaking on what we are aware of. We're just going off of what we know. We're addressing the stuff we know. We know a decent amount. So, Morgan, I guess let's talk about some of the stuff that the people that strongly dislike the Duggars, whether it's non-Christians or Christians, that they're, like, upset with them about. Let's, let's bring some of those to the table. Listen... I agree. The Duggars, specifically Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar, parents. the parents, and the way they've raised their family, are, it's intense. It's intense. Sounds pretty intense. It let's sounds, let's talk about a few of those kind yes. of controversial topics. It sounds legalistic. It sounds intense. It sounds whoa. What does some of the things that they believe or or against. They're against dancing of any kind. Any kind of dancing. They, you know, believe firmly in modesty in that like women should not be wearing pants or shorts, like only skirts that are below your knees, um, dresses, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Um, and once again, I'm, tr I'm trying in real time, and I thought about this some before, but to get to the bottom of do I feel like this family and these parents are missing it and that they should be like called out um no so, tattoos okay. no alcohol i don't even know if they like believe in drinking coffee i feel like i saw that somewhere but i could be wrong no piercings other than ears so so far i'm just hearing really strict i think all christians have taken like certain things but then these people like really go hard <laughs> they go hard in the paint um when it comes to courting and whatnot they have to um like all the guys have to fill out like a 50 page questionnaire <laughs> that are wanting to court their daughters. Yeah, they have to be interviewed by the dad and, you know, which sounds crazy and seems weird, but like you said, we know yeah. people I, I heard are that intense. Yeah, I, I heard a video talking about how they, you know, as you guys can probably expect, really value having kids and staying off of birth control. And it's interesting because early on in their marriage, uh, Jim Bob, <laughs> country and it's a country boy name. Jim, Jim Bob, Bob and what's her name? Michelle. And Michelle, they actually were on birth control for the first part of their marriage. But now they've obviously taken to really just letting God play in their family. Yeah. I heard that they push that on their kids, yeah. at least rumors. And that one of their older kids actually... <clears throat> recently to my knowledge has started using birth control with her husband um I couldn't find anything like okay special. morgan is saying she couldn't find any of that stuff i thought i heard that and that that was causing friction that could be just hearsay we do know that there is some friction between a one or two of the kids with the parents and mm -hmm. it's like they're grown adult kids that are married yeah both it's married it's friction that seems, you know, like, one, maybe it's necessary of, hey, we need to separate and be, like, our own married couple, and you guys are being too overbearing, so we're going to step away for a bit. Man is to leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two are to become one flesh. It would seem like Jim Bob and Michelle very much desire the entire family, even after they're married, to stay together. And that's not necessarily been the case for a few of the kids. Like it's just a giant family unit? Just, yeah, like on a compound, compound, family compound. <laughs> so I'm hearing some stuff and I'm like, that's overkill. That sounds kind of weird to me. Just some of their, what I would perceive as legalism in the sense that these seem more like gray areas, not black and white sin issues. Mm -hmm. Like you, I, I don't feel like you can look at the Bible and say, the Bible says that women have to wear skirts or that yeah. women are only allowed to ta uh, pierce their ears but not pierce their noses. And I think that was an issue as well. One of the older daughters got her nose pierced and the parents didn't like that. Yeah. So kind of an overbearing. But once again, I'm not hearing too many things that are like, oh my goodness, huge red flag. I can think of parents of certain friends that I've had that have really strict rules. 
And I, I see these people accusing them of being fundies. And once again, Morgan and I have had plenty of that, of people coming at us. Um, I see them accusing them of that, and I'm like, okay, they could totally have just jumped on my upbringing and because my, my mom was really careful about the shows we watched. And when it came to we got in our teens, the dating and the emphases that my parents put on us, you know, guarding our purity and the boundaries that we had. So yeah. I'm not seeing too many things so far that to me are obvious red flags. With the Duggar family, I feel like, yeah, it's, you look at the family and you're just like, this family is really intense. These parents are really intense and really strict and stuff. But like, like Paul said, whether you agree with the way they're raising their children or have raised their children, like, are there really that many red flags of just, just such danger like these right. children's lives are at risk this family is so dangerous and i want nothing to do with them let's all gang up on them yeah like so many have done i just i don't see a ton of that obviously with josh that is a red flag but he's a grown man and is on his own now and like they dealt with it and him when he was under their roof as much as they felt necessary. You might disagree with how they did it. I might disagree with how they did it. I don't honestly know wh what I would have done. Well, and let's, let's go back to that a little bit. As far as the Josh, that may be one area where we feel like they missed the mark. Yeah. As far as responding to him, because from what I was watching, it seems like, yes, they dealt with him when he was 13 or 14 in the first episode. Fair enough. But then as he gets older and he cheats on his wife and has admits to having this porn addiction, you know, how are they dealing with it? It sounds like they've kind of still allowed him to be... Right. And I don't know. It, Just a part of the fam. Like maybe they haven't responded to that in a, a, a correct way. And yeah. And we would just say like, why have you not? Just like distance yourself from him more to make it clear like these are not okay things that you are we're, doing. Yeah. We're not going to sweep this under the rug and just be like, all right, he did something else really bad. Come stay in the family business. Stay in a position of being kind of in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you take these things very seriously. You say, Josh... You know, even if you are repentant or acting like you're repentant, you're not going to be in a position of, you know, right. acting like you're this spiritual godly man and you're still, I don't know if he's in the spotlight or up still. I feel like he's still in the company or something. It's a difficult issue. And now that the allegations, and I think they're true, I don't know if they're just allegations or what, but they're really nasty. But before when it was just he, you know, cheated on his wife and has the admitted to the addiction, you got to take this stuff seriously. And so if they're not taking that seriously, that is on the parents. I, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's, it's also a hard situation because it's like, okay, they distance themselves from him, but he's got a wife and six children. So does that mean that they abandon them and they're like, we're not helping out and we're firing your husband because we don't want to to be around him or let him think that, this, that we're okay with this and that means mm -hmm. that your husband doesn't have a job and we just like you just lost your income i don't know so it's, it's a sticky weird tricky situation you know we, we want them to live above reproach being in the spotlight we want them to be good examples and to be taking this stuff seriously it's interesting because as soon as you let cameras into your home into your life into your family i just feel like reality tv shows can just be dangerous and i personally have said that i want a reality tv show and mm -hmm. as a I do more research into the Duggar family and just thinking about reality TV shows, I'm like, I had no idea what I was saying when I say that because it just, you're literally inviting the world into your home to judge you and everything that you're going to do in raising your family, loving your spouse. And we have a very teeny tiny taste of that just by having this YouTube channel and being on Instagram. I can't even imagine having a national televised reality TV show. Especially when you're on there for the shock value already. Yeah. And I, again, I haven't seen it, so I, I can just assume the producers are like, okay, this is going to be shocking, so let's really hone in on this. Mm -hmm. And suddenly once people start to kind of turn on you then it's like they're gonna take these different shock values oh the parents said no to any type of dancing oh the parents wouldn't let their kids kiss on dates that's extreme purity culture that's extreme controlling and then the cases are made 
And I want to talk about that a little more Mm -hmm. for that was such a dysfunctional way of parenting them. Now they're going to go crazy. So yeah, let's, let's talk about that. I'm, I'm processing this. The idea that such a strict way of parenting, and then suddenly you have the oldest kid that seems to be sexually just kind of going crazy. Should the case be made, and I think purity culture is part of it, but just a very strong protection on kids, are they going to fly off the deep end in the opposite direction? I mean, again, out of 19 kids, as far as we know, only one has gone really, really like wild in secret and was caught. (laughs) Other than that, we really haven't seen any of their children like rebel so hardcore. Maybe some of them have rebelled in their minds, Mm -hmm. but really when you look at it, like they're all still walking with the Lord. They're all still conservative and yeah, I'm, Christian. I'm like, going to say something that I don't, don't think many people are going to want to hear. Oh, dear. I think a lot of people observe a family that's really strict and they think to themselves, like, I wasn't raised that strict. I'm not going to raise my kids that strict. And they just start, like, building themselves up and wanting to look for ways to tear down that family for being stricter than them. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're offended. Maybe their pride is hurt. Mm -hmm. I turned out good. My mom would never have done that. My mom let me do this and this and this. Just stuff like that. I just, I feel like it's so easy to turn on people. Do I think that it can be problematic? As I said before, I think it it just sounds like the parents took things too far in a few different areas. In my opinion, I wouldn't take it that far if I was a parent and saying, my kids, you're not allowed to do this, 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 this. It just sounded like it was overboard. And I think that can be said for purity culture or protection when it comes to relationships and sex and all that. I think that there should be a healthy, the parents are having conversations with their kids. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should leave that to your school to do, but I think parents should ideally do it and do it in a good way. If a parent is, you know, just striking all this fear and your worth is in your virginity, sex is blah, 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 like it can be abused. Here, from what I've seen with the Duggars, I don't know. I don't know enough about that. I know that my parents were really strict and careful with me. I know lots of other parents who have done, I guess it's just, what I'm trying to say is it's hard. It's a difficult balance. And so we're so quick to, I guess, turn on these Christian parents for going overboard when it's like, okay, should they just scrap it all and say, good luck, go to public school and your teachers will, they'll teach you everything you need to know in sex ed class. And oh, little Jimmy's looking at porn. Go ahead. It's part of growing up, (laughs) you know? So there's this extreme of just totally grace and anything goes. And then there's this extreme of I'm going to protect every little thing. There's always room for the outcomes not to be great, but I would just say, I think leaning more on the side of being protective is wise. I think there's more wisdom in leaning on that side than leaning on the other side. I personally feel like, yes, I want to be more protective over my children than not, but I do want to always rely on the Lord to lead me, and I don't want to become super legalistic. And some people might say Paul and I are super legalistic already, but I personally do not think we are. I think if you compared us to the Duggars, we are wild stallions um, Morgan's got <laughs> tattoos. tattoos like I would have been kicked out of the house real quick she wears pants <laughs> she doesn't wear the pants in the family boom <laughs> oh my goodness <sighs> but I don't want to become so black and white on things that aren't super black and white but of course I'm gonna raise my child to you know follow and, and do the things that I believe in but I'm also I want them to have their own minds I want them to make their own decisions when they get to a point of being able to make decisions and I want them to have their own walk with the Lord and whatever but yeah I think it's better to play it safer than sorry one other thing I'll say concerning these kind of gray areas that it sounds like the Duggars parents are making really big deals. I'm not sure how big a deal they're making it, but yeah, the stuff you were saying, the dancing, the piercing, the tattoos, the modesty, you know, they have every right to do that while the kids are living under their roof. They're saying, these are our rules. This is how it's going to be done. Fair enough. But once their kids are grown and leave their parents' house to be united to, you know, a husband or a wife and start their own family, I think that especially these non-black and white issues, these non- this is sin and this isn't issues, kind of gray area, the parents need to relax. Like now this is a whole new family unit and I need to be able to give some grace to that. So if the parents are treating these issues like, oh, I'm disowning you because you have a husband now and a kid and you're decided that you're going to wear pants. 
Yeah, that's messed up. That seems like... That's not okay. <laughs> what? You're making this a sin issue that you're going to disown your kid about? I hope yeah. that's not happening. It does maybe sound like the, the parents or especially the dad there's, putting... There's definitely been some confrontation and I, disagreements. I hope that the disagreements, there can be compromise or there can be... I mean, disagreements are okay. The dad's allowed to voice like, hey, Jill, we really think that you shouldn't send your kids to public school because I think that might be one of them. I heard they're going to maybe send their kids to public school. Or your mom and I feel really strongly that you shouldn't be on birth control. Or really strongly that modesty that you should not wear pants. You should keep wearing these long skirts. They're allowed to do that, but then I think they need to respect. But you're your own family unit. You're married to a man that can have perspective on that. And I'm not, you're a one guy anymore giving you advice. Even though I'm your father, you're a grown woman. I, I want there to be some respect there. And if there's not, I feel like that's problematic. Yeah. Show. All right, guys, so that was a lot, and we just we hit on several different things, gave our thoughts. This is still kind of a working thing because we haven't seen all of the videos and maybe heard all of the stances and their stories, whatever. That's kind of where we're at. Where are you guys at on the Duggars? Comment below and let us know. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed us talking about the Duggar family. Man. Oh. All right, guys. Well, we hope that you all are blessed. You're having a good week. And we will talk to you again very soon. Have hope. And be free. Can we all just recognize that Squishy is being very cute right now? <laughs> she is so cute. Oh, hi. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Squishy. You 